Henry Cavendish was a wealthy English gentleman who made several scientific discoveries. In 1813, a biography of him was written by Thomas Thompson, a Scottish physician, author and teacher who founded Annals of Philosophy, a scientific journal in which Cavendish's biography was the first ever article. Thompson noted that Cavendish was shy and bashful to a degree bordering on disease, but that despite this he was a constant attendant at the Sunday evening meetings of Sir Joseph Banks, the famous botanist and president of the Royal Society, who, in contrast to Cavendish, was amenable to having his portrait painted. Cavendish was also never absent from the weekly dinner of the Royal Society at the Crown and Anchor Tavern in the Strand. Here, in fact, he was known to converse a lot when seated near those that he liked. Beyond these general observations, however, Thomson noted that the first of Henry Cavendish's 17 scientific publications represented a most important step in the science of chemistry. The 1766 publication described Cavendish's studies on gases released in chemical reactions, gases he referred to as factitious airs. Prior to the study, as noted by Cavendish, the only such characterised gas was called fixed air and had been obtained from reactions of limestone by Joseph Black. In fact, Cavendish included studies of Black's fixed air, now known as carbon dioxide, in his 1766 report, but the main development was his characterisation of a gas he referred to as inflammable air. As Cavendish pointed out, it was known that an inflammable gas was released when iron, tin or zinc were treated with either sulfuric or hydrochloric acid. Cavendish chose to isolate and characterise the inflammable gas released in each case by carrying out the reactions in a bottle and allowing the released gas to collect in a separate upturned bottle under water. Then he measured the density and flammability of the gases. For example, in each case, setting light to a mixture of two parts of inflammable air with eight parts of atmospheric air, he obtained a moderately loud noise. And Cavendish charmingly described the ignition of seven parts of inflammable air with three parts of common air as going off with a gentle bounce or a puff. In addition to these flammabilities, however, Cavendish observed that the gas densities were also the same in each case. He did this quantitatively by using a pewter pipe to fill an emptied pig's bladder with the released gases. Then he measured the difference in weight between the emptied and the inflated bladder. He made these measurements with care and precision, but at the time the full significance of his work was not understood. Just two decades later, however, Cavendish's inflammable air would be named as hydrogen and known to be a component of water and many other compounds. So Thomas Thompson was absolutely right. It was a most important step in the science of chemistry. Thanks to these sources and their contributors, and to you for watching to the very end. Hope to see you again sometime soon.